Mr. Bugliosi, call your next witness, please. Dr. Charles Petty. If you would, please. Doctor, if you come forward. Raise your right hand, please. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you will give in the proceedings before this court will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Take a seat in the witness stand, please. Right around there. Thank you, Doctor. May the court please... Uh... The defense asked the court permission to have uh, our expert, Dr. Brady, uh, enter the courtroom and, uh, and be present during Dr. Petty's testimony. No objection, Your Honor. Oh, fine. Thank you. Dr. Petty, were you one of nine forensic pathologists from around the country chosen by the House Select Committee on Assassinations in 1977 to serve on the autopsy panel reinvestigating the assassination of President Kennedy? I was. And what was the conclusion your panel came to as to how many bullets struck the president, their point of entry, and the path they took through the president's body? Uh, my conclusion and the conclusion of the panel was that the president was struck by two bullets, uh, one entering the right upper back and exiting in the front of the neck, uh, the other entering the right back of the head and exiting in the uh, what we call the right frontal area, that is, the front and side of the head. Is there any doubt in your mind, doctor, whatsoever, that both bullets that struck the president came from the rear and no bullets struck him from the front? Uh, none whatsoever. Would you explain, to the best of your knowledge, to the jury, what happened once the bullet entered the president's head? The bullet began to break up into small fragments, broke the skull up into fragments, and blasted out uh, through the right frontal part of the head. Exhibit 102. What's that? Uh, this is a diagram of the skull showing the point of entrance in the back of the president's head and the exit in the right frontal area. Doctors, I'm sure you're well aware one of the principal contention of the critics is that President Kennedy's head snap to the rear around frames 315 to 320 on the Zapruder film means in the eyes of the critics, to some of them, that he must have been struck by a bullet from the front. You're aware of that contention? Yes, I am. What conclusion did your panel come to with respect to this head snap to the rear? The head snap to the rear, in the view of the panel, was that this was an automatic, involuntary reaction on the part of the president's nerves and muscles. There was a blast inside the head, the nerves were fired off, and the muscles were set into action. The muscles in the back are stronger than the muscles in the front, and so therefore the head moved backward. Let me ask you this, Dr. Petty. Assuming the president ha had been struck by a bullet from the front, make that assumption, could the transference of momentum from that bullet have thrown the president backward, as is shown in frames 315 to 320 of the Zapruder film? No, sir, not in my opinion. And why is that? No, because the head is too heavy, uh, there is too much, much, too much muscular resistance uh, to movement. So the killings that people see on television uh, and in the movies, uh, which is the only type of killings most people ever see, where the person struck by the bullet very frequently, visibly and dramatically is propelled backward by the force of the bullets. That's not what actually happens in life when a bullet hits a human being. No, of course not. Dr. Petty, did you also seek to ascertain how many bullets struck Governor Connolly, their point of entry, and the path they followed once they entered his body? Yes. And your panel arrived at a conclusion? That is correct. Did you tell the jury what conclusion your panel reached with respect to Governor Connolly? The panel concluded that the governor was struck in the back, uh, that the bullet uh, circled around the outside of the chest, exited beneath the right nipple, went on to continue through his wrist, and then on into his thigh, the right wrist, the left thigh. Doctor, there has been testimony that Governor Connolly may have reacted up to just over a second after President, President Kennedy reacted. Would that preclude Governor Connolly and President Kennedy being struck by the same bullet? No, not at all. Why not? Because people react differently uh, to different bullets. Uh, the bullets may wound people in different areas and even in the same area different individuals react in different ways. They may not even know that they've been struck by a bullet. Did your pathology panel conclude that the bullet that entered the president's upper right back and exited the front of his throat was the same bullet that went on and struck Governor Connolly on his back near his right armpit? Yes, the panel came to that conclusion. Exhibit 130. Doctor, now on the screen to your left is the bullet purportedly removed from Governor Connolly's stretcher. Did your panel examine this bullet? Yes. You saw the actual bullet? 
Yes. Could this bullet have ended up in this relatively pristine condition if it had entered the president's back, exited his throat, then entered Governor Connolly's back near his right armpit, and taken the path through Governor Connolly's body you have just described? Yes, Would course. you explain to the jury how you arrive at this conclusion? Uh, this bullet is a full metal jacket military bullet designed to pass through the soft tissues of an individual, exactly as it did in President Kennedy's instance. Uh, it then contacted bone only in two areas. First, the rib in Connolly, and second, uh, the, the wrist bone in Connolly. In neither instance did it penetrate uh, the rib or the wrist bone. Uh, it easily travels through such soft tissues as that without great deformity. Okay, thank you, Doctor. No further questions. Mr. Spence. Now, there are some serious problems with this autopsy, aren't there, Doctor? There are some problems with the autopsy, So yes, let's sir. be honest with this lady, the ladies and gentlemen of the jury, and let's tell them. Let's just tell them what the problem was. Did you ever see the brain? No. Do you think it's important for a doctor, before he gives his opinion, to see the brain, to determine where the course of the bullet was? It would be nice if the brain were available. Now, please, doctor, let's not be silly. Let's not do that. You're a professional. You're under oath. Tell the ladies and gentlemen of the jury if it isn't essential for you to see the brain. No, it's not essential to see the brain. You didn't see the brain in this case? No, I did not. Do you know where it is? No, I do not. Did you look for it? Well, not really. Did, is, as a matter of fact, well, now, please, doctor, you smile. But as a matter of fact, didn't your committee uh, ask some 20 different people where the brain of the president was? We asked, but we did not look for it. You couldn't find it, could you? No. Nobody came up with it, did they? No. Ask the FBI where the brain of the president was? I don't recall whether the FBI was asked, asked the or CIA not. Ask the CIA produce the brain of the president? I don't know whether the CIA was asked or not, to tell you well, the truth. Well, you wanted to find the brain, didn't you? We thought it would be nice to find it. It's not essential, however. Well, if, if it isn't essential, what would you rely on? the photographs and the x-rays. All right. Now, doctor. Volume 7, page 129. I'll even give it to counsel so he can see it. It's in yellow. Here you go, counsel. Thank you. As a matter of fact, let you and I read it together. I'll just no, you go, you, go, you go ahead, Bob. Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Dip, dip, dip. Okay, it, anyway, you read the first word, I'll read the second. I'll no, see you no. Alternate. It certainly does not. Dem not, Doctor, please listen to me. Are you aware of, the, of what's going on here? Please, I'm about to ask you a question. It certainly does not demonstrate the degree of laceration, fragmentation, or contusion as appears subsequent on the superior aspect of the brain that would be expected in this location if the bullet wound of entrance were as described in the autopsy report. The majority of the panel Please. members agrees that examination of the brain itself, even now, would substantiate the opinion that he was shot from behind. Isn't that correct, you... sir? Excuse me. Just he's, a minute. He's just, you... now skipped, he's just now skipped three... Uh, he just now skipped 17 have... lines. Please uh, mark that as an exhibit. It's nice to see both of you sitting side by side. <laughs> <laughs> Warms the cockles of my heart. Yeah, Mr. I... Thank you. There is hope for us, Judge. Thank you. It says that the brain did not show the lacerations and contusions as would have been expected had the bullet entered where the autopsy surgeon said it entered. Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank Dr. You, Dr. Uh... Was Dr. Fink one of the three pathologists that performed the autopsy on President Kennedy? He was there at the time and helped to uh, examine the president. Is he a hopeless, utter incompetent doctor? Of course not. Did you imply to this gentleman here that maybe he wasn't incompetent, that don't he should have been me. there? Don't I'm not going to hit you, cowboy. Please. Just a minute. Did Just you imply to him, by your total utter silence, that Dr. Fink, or whatever his name is, was an incompetent, 
Not at all. Well, then tell he the was, jury what you think of Dr. Fink. Dr. Fink is and was and may still be the uh, most qualified man in wound ballistics in the Army and has studied many uh, high-velocity rifle wounds. Don't keep secrets, okay? What about Dr. Hume? Was he competent? Of course. Did you imply to this man here that he was not? No, he merely I answered his question. What about Dr. Boswell? I don't know Dr. Boswell. But you heard of him. Well, no, oh, yes. No, please, cut. Is that him answer? Yeah, I just want to say something, Judge. Even though oh. he's, he's counsel's witness, I'd appreciate it if he wouldn't yell at the man. He's a gentleman. Okay. Thank you, Doctor. No further questions. Doctor, you've been a very patient witness. We appreciate you. you coming. Thank you very much.